I believe in you with all my heart. Your outreach is rebuffed. Keep trying. Line. But as we sit down with her now, we begin as she did in her new book, Hard Choices. Six years ago, the end of the longest primary race in history, and candidate Hillary Clinton has just gone down in a shattering defeat. <laughs> Soviet connection tonight's report Cub Fief she's fucked well, you don't know me, but I know you, and I'm gonna sing to give to you. Why did you lose? I think because I really didn't um, have a good strategy for my campaign. I didn't plan it the right way. What do you mean? As um, a candidate who was already so well known, I don't think I ever said, yes, you, you may have known me for eight years, but I don't take anything for granted. I have to earn your support. You know, this, this is very personal for me. It's not just political. It's not and just I think my campaign got into gear, frankly, after I got so badly uh, beaten in Iowa. Uh, and I went to New Hampshire and just worked my heart out along with everybody who was supporting me. Too late? I think it was too late. And we now know from her new book that right after the defeat, she sped to a secret meeting with the winner. She was lying down in the back seat of a car hiding from the press. And she says that first meeting was like an awkward first date. And you had Chardonnay. California Chardonnay. <laughs> it was like an awkward first date. Now, obviously, I had known him for several years, but the campaign was so intense, and our staffs and our, our supporters were, were really at odds with each other. I don't think we ever felt that way about each other. Oh, Just, yes, you no, did. We, we, no, not really. And Hillary, run one. You won. You won.
No, we're on an e-bot-ill bad bus I got earth fail. You're free, didn't it? I need my scum with ya. Snaps the look of the looks of schnancy. Hammer falls your period. This is the danger. The sweet air. With fat. The snare griffin is in it. Yes, my daughter. Sweet air theme. One bam, we, we, say. That's your bet. I can get more. Yep. One like what cedar was who hit an egg. Get back. Maybe not. Yeah, we are with the nail. This guy needs me. Yeah, I'm refusing it. I have to look the back. This really guys are hitting it. Yeah. So let's just go. her clothes, her appearance, even though at the time she put on a brave face. I admire what Senator Clinton has done for America. Um, I'm sure about that coat. <laughs> I actually like Hillary's jacket. I don't know what's wrong with her. Uh, I was not as effective calling it out during that campaign either because there is a double standard. We live with a double standard and people ought to think about their own daughters, their own sisters, their own mothers when they make comments about women in public life. Sorry, first oh, girl. When are you going to decide whether you're running for president? <laughs> You know, I'm going to decide uh, when it feels right for me to decide because... Um, Still by the end of this year? Well, you know, certainly not before then. I just want to kind of get through this year, travel around the country, help in the midterm elections in the fall, and then take a deep breath and kind of go through my pluses and minuses about what I will and, and will not uh, be thinking about as I make the decision. But probably not announced until next year? I'm not positive about that, but that's probably likely. We know all of the currents that right. might be driving you to say yes. Right. What is the strongest reason to say no? Well, because I really like my life. I like what I'm doing. I'm thrilled about becoming a grandmother in the fall. I have lots of hopes uh, for what that means uh, to me and my family. Can you savor being a grandmother and be president? Of course, men have been serving in that position, being fathers and grandfathers since the beginning of the Republic. But I want to know how I feel. I mean, you have one life to live. This is, this is it. It's not a dress rehearsal. The women and girls, she says, were counting on her. Tonight, there is a Ready for Hillary Super PAC, which plays Katy Perry's Roar. It has raised six million dollars. And no other candidate is coming forward, so is it fair that while she decides she's in effect holding the party hostage? I am so appreciative of everybody who's encouraging me. I, I'm grateful that they have that confidence in me. Uh, but this is a really personal decision. I know it's a personal decision, but if you can do it, do you have to do it? I have to make the decision that's right for me and the country. But and is the party I have to make frozen it. in place waiting for you no, to No, I mean, no. People, people can do whatever they choose to do on whatever timetable they decide. Barbara Bush has said, enough with the Clintons and the Bushes, the Clintons <laughs> and the Bushes. Yeah. It's just getting silly, she said. Do you feel some of that? I don't, because this is, this is a democracy. People get to choose their leaders. Is the White House yours to lose? Well, I don't think so, because if I were to decide to pursue it, I would be 
working as hard as any underdog or any newcomer uh, because I don't want to take anything for granted if I decide to do it. And what does she do about the focus on her appearance that she says once kept her so on guard? Scripted, cautious, right. safe, well, but I think armored. Part, part of, and, I, and I understand why some people might have um, seen that or, or certainly attributed that because when you're in the spotlight as a woman, you know you're being judged constantly. I mean, it is just never ending. And you get a little, you know, worried about, okay, well, you know, people over on this side are loving what I'm wearing, looking like, saying, people over on this side aren't. And how, how you know, your, your natural tendency is how do you bring people together so that you can better communicate? I'm done with that. I mean, I'm just done. You said you're just over it. You I are. am over it, over it. I think I have changed. Not worry so much about what other people are thinking. And my view is I have lived an incredibly blessed life. I've had so many wonderful experiences. And I'm going to say what I know, what I believe, and let the chips fall. Time for radical candor? <laughs> I love that phrase. I think if you don't mind, I'll use it. Right. Well, Let's but I it. think for me, it's, it's time. I don't know that I could have done it earlier because I was certainly trying to find my way. But what has not changed is the Republicans clearly think their big fight is against her. Republican powerhouse Karl Rove already tried to launch a salvo, saying he thought maybe she had ongoing effects from a kind of brain trauma. After that big headline-making fall last December, causing a concussion. How is your health? It's very good, thank you. How serious was it? It was, you know, it was, a, uh, I think, a serious concussion. Were you you I had rest... trouble with vision. Because of the force of the, of the fall, I had, some, I had double vision for uh, a short period of time, and I had some dizziness. Did you have trouble talking? No. She says for a couple of weeks she was dizzy on bed rest and got an MRI for a checkup, and with that, news of a second blow. Well, can I tell you, that's what's, that, that was a scary point. I go into the MRI machine, I do that. Then um, I go into a conference room, and my, my husband and my, my daughter and son-in-law are there and all these doctors. So here's what they say. They say, the good news is the concussion is totally resolving. Like we told you, it's going to be fine. The bad news is you've developed a clot behind your right ear, and you must immediately go to the hospital because we have to immediately put you on blood thinners. So I went, was there for three days, and then got out. So uh, blood thinners now. Blood thinners, yeah. Yeah. For life? Probably, but I don't mind because I don't ever want to have to go through that again. So she I points out a few weeks after the concussion, we saw her testify before Congress. And once again, she's traveling nonstop around the country. So no lingering effects? No lingering effects. Of any kind? No. Nope. You would release your medical records if you ran for president? I would do what other candidates have done, absolutely. And what would you like to say to Carl Rove about <laughs> your brain? That um, I know he was called Bush's brain in one of the books written about him, and uh, I wish him well. <laughs> Now, 
Now, if you've been extinguished, Lord, you can help me advise your real Lord to sit in the shock. Now, so, you know, so, yes, 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 sir, yes, sir, I see a lot in your head, they're on the snack, heard all the yam, yam, and if so, yam, yam, no, if so, if I can always get my knife, I do not need to shimmer on my ear, no, I got a very sizzle, I had a slip slide, and I was kind of close. Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm <laughs> Next, this area of skill of no minimus, never felt so real, but I reckon in this will be up. See, we am thinking if there will be further up, don't buy a bestow or zero one. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. There are. There are. There are. There are. Such nice, nice, such many maps. I assume nice map. Actually, <laughs> Oh, 
was originally, she got a ticket to ride and the bitch don't care, man. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this right here, right here is payback from way back. I don't play that. Play that. This right here, right here is payback from way back. I don't play that. Play that. Right this here. right here right is payback right from way here. back. I don't right play that. Right this here. right here right is payback right from here. way back. I don't right play that. He said this. It made me think. It made me think. Cub Thief. She's fucked. He said this. It made me think. It made me think. <laughs> 